Trade has been one of the biggest anti-poverty programs the world has ever seen. The number of people in Asia living below the poverty line fell from over 40% in the 1980s to less than 10% today. Just look at South Korea compared to North Korea and the success of China. As incomes rise across East Asia, demand for premium quality food is growing. That's terrific news for the Australian honey industry, now worth over $100 billion. This is where you'll find some of the sweetest honey around, Tasmania. So tell us your story. How did Australian honey products begin? Well, I was only a young fellow in my tw early 20s, just got married at 23, and I was renting a flat like everybody else does, and I thought, well, how can I create a business so that I can move it when I eventually buy something. So I started beekeeping. So did you have beekeeping in your family? Not at all. So I had to learn from the beekeeping fathers that were here in Tasmania, and I, you know, changed my occupation and got to 200 hives eventually. So where do you export to? Just about every country, bar the US. I haven't gone there yet, but everywhere else in the Trans-Pacific and Asia, Europe, just about everywhere. So when did you start noticing that high demand from Asia? <laughs> 40 years ago. 40 years ago, and I, I just started trying to export, so I actually went over there. I went over there with honey meads and with honeys. And to my horror, I found when I got there that the import duties for South Koreans was 300%. So I didn't get any contracts with that. But I went there because the Australian government was offering a exporter's incentive program. So the export incentive program was that if I could have exported to a country, that would give me an extra 15% bonus. So that's what attracted me to try and start exporting. Have the free trade agreements helped you? My word, they have. They really made it cheaper for our customers to buy our products. It was 25% and now they're reducing. With Japan especially, it's down now to 11%, 11.5. And more importantly, the quotas are going to increase. So that'll make it a lot easier for Australians to send honey to Japan. Tell me your average day as a beekeeper. Pretty long hours. Yes. Because you see, we have to get up early in the morning. Yes. How four o'clock in the morning. Four in the morning. Yeah, and on the road at five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to get to the beehives before the bees start flying. How do you think exports and tourism help Tasmania? Oh, they really go hand in hand together. We can export our knowledge and various things, and, we, and tourists are wonderful for us. We can't get enough of them. We have so many cruise ships come into our great harbour in Hobart, and, you know, it's just wonderful. So what do you love most about the life of a beekeeper? It's the perfect life. It is perfect and everybody like us. We do wonderful things, and we're the most important cog in the wheel. And we are responsible for pollinating so many crops for other industries, other farmers, orchardists, seed farmers, and even the people who grow stock and everything. We do lots and lots of clover and lucerne, which are seed stocks, and we pollinate all of that. It's a wonderful thing. Every day, I can't wait to get up to go beekeeping. And the best thing is when you put bees into the rainforest to get the leatherwood honey, and you go past a few days later, and you can't wait, you've got to lift the lid to see what's happened. And if they're, sometimes they're full, absolutely white combs full of honey, and it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. <laughs> 